Joining us in studio is Dr. Andrew Weil, a Harvard Medical School graduate and founder of the director of the program in integrative medicine at the University of Arizona's Health Sciences Center, an internationally recognized expert on medical herbs, mind-body interactions, and integrative medicine. Dr. Weil is the author of eight best-selling books, including his latest, The Healthy Kitchen. Also with us tonight is Dr. Stephen Canope, a board-certified internist and four-time Ironman triathlete and a second-degree black belt in Kempo Karate. Dr. Canope is founder of the Tucson-based Canope Institute for Core Strength. Thank you both for being with us tonight. Dr. Weil, the big knock on alternative medicine is that the therapies are largely unproven. What Can these unproven therapies exist with proven medicine? Well, first of all, I think to keep it in perspective, a great deal of what we do in conventional medicine does not have a solid evidence base behind it either. So we should be aware of that. Uh, also, I, I have long been advocating a sliding scale of evidence that would work this way. Uh, the greater the potential of a treatment to cause harm, the stricter the standards of evidence it should be held to for efficacy. I think if we adopted that, it would cut through a lot of the problems that we now have and also with the lack of resources to do this kind of research. Uh, if we're using, talking about therapies that have a relatively low potential for harm, I feel comfortable using them while we are developing the evidence base for their efficacy. Dr. Knope, what are your concerns about alternative medicine? Well, again, the, uh, the issue of proof is, is my primary concern. Um, I think when you start telling patients that they can cure their illnesses with uh, mind-body connections, uh, there's certainly a, uh, a risk that, that patients are going to try therapies which are unproven at the expense of, of using proven therapies. And I have uh, patients in my practice, for example, who have experimented with alternative care for cancer, which nearly cost them their life. Historically, though, Dr. Cano, medicine has used treatments without much study, hasn't it? Well, yes, and, and that's sort of the irony here, uh, if you will. Alternative medicine is viewed as sort of the new age medicine, when in fact unproven medicine has been the rule of the day for centuries. And uh, as recently as 200 years ago, uh, we nearly killed the father of our country, or actually we did kill him, uh, George Washington, by bloodletting. So I think what's new on the, on, on the horizon is the scientific method, and that has allowed us really to, to, to progress to the state that we're at now. What do you say to that, Dr. Well, uh, Dr. Knope says he's had patients who tried these cancer patients who tried unproven therapies. I mean, I've certainly known such patients too, but that's not how we train our doctors in the program in integrative medicine. We see a lot of patients, uh, cancer patients, and uh, we have in many cases argued patients into doing conventional therapies who didn't want to do it. I think that in, when patients are in conventional therapy, there's a great deal out there that their oncologists are not likely to recommend to them that can help moderate the toxicity of those treatments, increase their efficacy, and improve general health. Uh, if patients reject conventional therapy, we might help them find alternative treatment that is the best choice for them. Uh, but that's certainly not what we primarily do. And again, I would remind uh, listeners that a great deal of what's done currently in conventional medicine does not have a solid evidence base behind it. A recent example is hormone replacement for women at menopause. Uh, the risks of estrogen replacement were well known, increased cancer risks. There was no evidence there for the benefits for which it was really promoted for a number of decades on generations of women. Then there's this important issue, Dr. Weil, of regulation and a lack of regulation. The FDA does not regulate supplements. Isn't it customer beware when it comes to these supplements? Absolutely. And uh, I'm, I am a strong advocate of increased regulation, but I think to do that, the FDA needs to create a whole new division of natural therapeutic agent whose aim is not to thwart consumer access, but to facilitate access to better products. I also think that it would be very helpful if doctors and pharmacists were trained in this area so that they could be advisors uh, of consumers as to how to shop wisely and what to use, what not to use, and what mixes with conventional drugs and what doesn't. Dr. Canope, are you worried about this, uh, this safety issue when we're talking about lack of regulation? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very worried about it. And, you know, I, I think this issue was really exposed nicely a couple of years ago on 60 Minutes when Dr. Weil said to the camera that he trusted three companies and the substances were tested by independent labs and there was an example where only 20% of the echinacea in the bottle was actually there. So there's this thing we call the dose... Oh, oh come now. I mean, first of all, these companies, the products that I recommended of these companies were not the ones that were tested. Uh, I was recommending vitamin products, not herbal products from these companies. 
the companies also were notified of this by 60 Minutes and responded in 60 Minutes, chose to ignore the information that was provided where there were contradictory test results. So, you know, I am the first one to admit there's a lot out there in the markets that are not worthwhile. But it's your position that purity is not an issue and 60 Minutes Absolutely was all wrong? Absolutely, it's an issue. I, 60 Minutes was wrong. They, 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 chose to ignore, they chose to ignore the contradictory evidence that was presented to them by the companies. I see. So you, you, 60 Minutes did not do you justice, in other words? I think on that instance, they didn't. I think there was an agenda there. Well, as long as we're on this and we're starting to interrupt and get into a little bit of fun here, um, you know, Dr. Weil, I was absolutely shocked when I, when I saw you describe to the public on national television that you were sitting in a field one day, dropped some LSD, had a kitty cat come up and sit in your lap, and that you talked yourself out of allergies to, uh, to cats, and that if this were, in fact, legal therapy, you would consider endorsing it for I patients. I have no problem with that statement. That was my experience. I lost a lifelong cat allergy instantly. If that drug were available legally, I would use it for that purpose. Okay, so here's the issue, and this is the crux of the problem. First of all, do you know that it was a cat that came up and sat in your lap? Yes, I know that it was a cat. Okay, but you were under the influence there of were a other hallucinogenic people drug. Okay, <laughs> right, well, okay, so it was a cat. That's but here's a, the uh, issue. Okay. I go ahead. This is bottom terribly, line. This. Bottom line, terribly unsafe. When you say to patients, look, I had a hallucinogenic experience. I have LS. never said that to a patient. On, on L well, you said 60 it to the Minutes country. elicited that you statement from You said it to the country no. and you just repeated it I here. I said it to a 60 Minutes reporter who chose right. to make that the lead sentence in a press right. release sent out by 60 Minutes. You have minutes. to admit, that's a couple standard deviations beyond the mean, isn't it? I do not. I am true to my experience. That was my experience. Right. Well, but this is the I issue. separate that from what I recommend to patients. Science says this. It's not enough to use your own experiments as as basis for treatment for patients, especially when you're talking about something as potentially dangerous as LSD. And I would call you on the carpet on that, Doctor. While I think it's terribly irresponsible. Qu quick response. The